The KV Heavy Tank, named after Kliment Vorashilov, one of the original five marshals of the Soviet Union, is as famous as the original bearer of its name. First, the tank had to win a tough fight against multi-turreted prototypes on its way to production. Then it went on to wreck Wehrmacht tanks in actual combat. Now, KVs are ever-present in War Thunder ground battles, fulfilling more or less the same role that they were designed for. KVs form the first line of defense and are more than capable of breaking through enemy defenses themselves. Working on the tanks of this family, Soviet engineers created many different variations, the latest of which saw the end of the war. Let's start from the very beginning, though. The first tank of the family is the KV-1, armed with the L-11 cannon. It has pretty decent armor for its 3.7 BR, 75 millimeters of armor pretty much all around. The only exception is the rear of the hull, with slightly lower values there. There are also a few weak spots. For instance, the radio gunner's machine gun is covered by only 45 millimeters of steel, although it's no easy task to land a shot there. Despite all that armor, a shell hitting the tank at 90 degrees can easily destroy it when coming from the side, and sometimes even from the front, as the degrees its armor is sloped at are not particularly favorable. When angling your hull, though, it's a completely different story. At a bit of an angle, the KV is virtually immune to most guns it faces. It's a fortress, and a pretty mobile one to boot. A 600-horsepower diesel engine allows this tank to perform almost as well as medium tanks even when going off-road. The only big flaw of this KV is its gun. It certainly has some one-shot potential, if you manage to penetrate the enemy armor, that is. And that's where it struggles considerably. The KV-1E, that's sitting at battle rated 4.0, is one of the earliest modifications to the KV formula. It is up-armored with bolted applique armor on the front and side of the hull and turret, creating armor that is up to 100 mm thick on the hull and up to 105 mm thick on the turret. The tank also received a new cannon and a round with a better fuse, but eh, its firepower is still not great, especially at its higher BR. That's why you should pay extra attention to the next model, the KV-1, armed with the ZIS-5 cannon. It achieves considerably better penetration rates and can use a couple of new rounds perfect for hunting heavily armored targets. A new APCR and an AP solid shot. Furthermore, this version got a new turret protected by 90 millimeters of steel making it a force to reckon with at BR 4.3. Let's make a detour to the German tech tree. There are a few interesting vehicles waiting for us there in the premium part of the tree. The KV-1B is basically a KV-1E with some applique armor that sits at BR 4.0. It represents a KV tank captured and used by the Finnish army. The KV-1B 756R is a KV heavily modified by the Wehrmacht. It has a cast steel turret and a BR of 4.7. Germans also upgunned it, giving the tank a long barrel 7.5 cm KWK-40L-48 gun, the one used in the late Panzer IV. Furthermore, the vehicle got a new commander's cupola, allowing for better visibility. OK, time to go back to the Soviet tech tree. The first thoroughly modified version of the KV is called the KV-1S, with S standing for the Skorostnoy, or the faster one. This variant was outfitted with a new transmission and shed a few tons of weight while hardly losing any armor. Good mobility, decent armor, and a new ZIS-5 cannon are truly a deadly combo enabling both lightning-quick attacks and sneaky flanking maneuvers. Good news is that there is only one more firepower coming with other versions of the tank. Take a look at the next vehicle, 
It's immediately recognizable thanks to its massive 152mm howitzer in a big square turret. The KV-2, its gun is a serious threat to all tanks in the game, even the latest MBTs. If its HE shell explodes under the vehicle or hits a roof, then it's an instant game over for the target in question. There are a few premium versions of this tank as well. In the Soviet tree, we can find a 1940 model that has a slightly lower profile and a slightly sturdier turret that was also modified to house a machine gun, a feature markedly missing on the original KV-2. Germans have a captured version of the vehicle called the KV-2754R, which also received a new commander's cupola. Then there was an attempt to outfit a KV-2 with a 107mm ZIS-6 cannon instead of a howitzer. This gun doesn't have the highest fire rate, but it does pack a punch. Most opponents in the tank's rank don't even stand a chance. The last production model is the KV-85, found at BR 5.0. This model boasts a brand new turret as well as a new gun, a quick-firing D5T cannon, just like on the IS Heavy tank. With a gun like that, you can get both excellent penetration rates and a lot of good rounds to choose from. At the same time, the tank's armor leaves much to be desired. This model was designed on the basis of the KV-1S, and it shows. Enemies with good guns are a real pain to deal with. You can still bounce a couple of enemy shots while angling, though. That's not all. Take a look at the KV-220, a rare experimental vehicle that sits at BR 5.7. The same BR that gives you tigers and panthers. Formidable foes. But even they do not always succeed in penetrating our tank's defenses. 100 millimeters of armor all round. Furthermore, it's another Vorashilov equipped with an 85mm cannon. What's there to fear when you have both armor and firepower? Finally, there is the KV-122, a prototype that was created as a result of a push to combine the strengths of the tanks of the KV family and the IS-2. The result comes from the D-25T cannon that is infamous for being extremely powerful and very slow to reload. This KV variant has no problem penetrating any kind of enemy armor, but a single mistake is all it takes to send you back to the hangar. The tank simply has rather weak armor for its BR, and its low mobility and horrendous fire rate mean that you have to be extra careful at all times. We also have to mention a few distant relatives, like the SU-152, a tank destroyer built on the chassis of the KV-1S and armed with a 152mm howitzer, or the premium SMK heavy tank, also known as the Sergei Mironovich Kirov, the grandfather of this whole family. Its hull clearly resembles the one of the KV tank, but there are two turrets on top of this one. This vehicle was one of the last multi-turreted tanks. It's a heavy, sluggish beast, with decent armor and a couple of guns. A 76mm one and a 45mm one. Its colossal weight and a very long hull are weaknesses inherent in the vehicles of its class. Compared to that design, a heavy tank with only one turret really felt like a breakthrough. And that was the KV-1.